There are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 7. Paul is speaking, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Nine. And to make how many men? There is a grace given that when you come under the influence of that grace, you must see. I hope you understand the story. He's saying a grace was given to me. And that by the privilege of God's power, the effectual working, he gave me a grace that when people come under the influence of that grace, he can make all men see. There is a grace that can take away blindness. Regardless of your level of education. Listen carefully. Regardless of your level of exposure. You see, there are things in life that you have to be educated to understand. There are things in life you have to be wealthy to understand. There are things in life you have to be poor to understand. There are things in life you have to be ignorant to understand. But there is a grace that can make all men see. Regardless of your level, regardless of your background, whether you can speak English or not is not the issue. The grace has capacity to quicken your understanding. He says, and it shall make him of quick understanding. If the matters of the spirit were left to educated people, then those who didn't have the privilege of formal education will be out of God's program. If it were left only to the rich, then the poor will not have a chance. Are we together? If it was left only to the exposed and enlightened, then those that did not have that kind of privilege will not have anything. But thank God for his grace. That when he pours his spirit is upon all flesh. And that this grace can make all men see what is the fellowship it's the word koinonia partnership the sharing drinking from the same vessel of the mystery so you can partake of a mystery not just an anointing you can partake of the grace that has made a man to see and you will see the same thing the lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power we're still going to explore along power and impartation god began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power isaiah chapter 35 my assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment because until you recognize the value for a thing, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it the excellency of camel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god verse 3 it says strengthen ye the weak hands 
he says and confirm the feeble knees verse 4 say to them who are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your god will come with vengeance even god with a recompense he will come and save you as a result then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb shall sing for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert the bible paints a picture of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of god is introduced many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment for many believers spiritual empowerment is is it's an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministry, it's unnecessary, it's a nuisance. All I need is just the word. But the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation. There was no one who had capacity to do God good without God anointing him. God will make a man, build that man, teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing is not... The same anointing that God works with is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered including mary the mother of jesus her carrying jesus for nine months did not empower her she had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit was it not the same spirit that put jesus in her womb but that did not empower her the bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak their humanity was so glaring but not for too long at a point in their life and in their experience they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living god then they were anointed and things turn around in their lives there is no man of god who can produce god's dimension of results and be a blessing just being a wonderful humane human being there has to be a translation by the power of god are we together? It is very, very important. Zechariah chapter 4, please. And verse 6. The prophet is speaking here. Zechariah 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of God unto Joshua Selman, saying, Not by might, human strength, nor by human power, but it is by my spirit. Excelling in your business, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to Jesus, not by might, nor by power. Getting a job, not by might, nor by power. Being favored, not by might, nor by power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Breaking a chain that was there before you were born. There were people stronger than you. That chain kept them there. It is not by might, 
nor by power, but by my spirit. You must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh. It will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirits. They diagnose the effect of their presence. But there is a word that is a discerner. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. He hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then he says he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Every time I read this scripture, when I get to that prison part, it touches me. Who are these men in prison? Because they still walk around. Yet the Bible says they are not only tied, they are in prison. To open the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say, God, change his life. It is within my power. There is an agency that can turn your life around. That men can receive something from heaven. That stops them from being human. You can look at a man with ashes, my brothers and my sisters. And within your power, according to the measure of grace, you look at that man and say, bring these ashes. I want to give you beauty. Like an award, like an exchange. And you say, go, you've had beauty. He will doubt it until his result shows. He steps out of that place. And all of a sudden, the scenario of his change and all this begin to change. And all that he sees is the glory of God. To give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Look how men can become blessings to men. That something can come upon your life when you see men mourning. You don't counsel, you don't sympathize. You tell them, I see you wearing a garment. It's only expressed in your tears. Let me take that garment away. And you can give them a garment of praise. That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. God wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints please listen to me it takes spiritual power to reign it takes more than good intention it takes more than good preaching it takes more than a sincere heart the days that we live in are evil days jesus himself Reveal to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value. Showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God. You are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longed for thee. 
in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water why am i seeking you to see thy power and thy glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary lord i'm seeking you there is there are things around my life that i know only your power can answer i've tried to use human wisdom i've tried to use certain things but i know that i need to outsource an ability that is higher than me ah happy is the man who is trusted with god's power you will watch life come under obedience to christ but when you are not empowered you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. let me tell you this let me tell you this you see everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors behind every movie i don't i don't do movie but at least i know a little about it that when you are acting a movie or drama there's someone called a director correct you may never have the privilege of seeing him he is at the back scheming things what you watch is the action but there is a director you slap this one twice no no according to my script you should slap him three times that means that behind the various scenarios of our lives there are systems and spirits orchestrating it the disfavor the closed door the unnecessary hardship the lack of church growth regardless of grace we focus many times on the events the events are like probabilities they are infinite behind every one of them are these spirits and the bible says how all inspiring are your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves hallelujah i once counseled an elderly man very old man and while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me. What is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. That this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion, some challenges will not let you go. Please listen very carefully. I shared with you in this place koinonia about a woman who was pregnant one time and then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her pastor monkeys and she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey dead how many people have been prayed for here with hiv ask them how they got it they said they came to me in a dream with an injection said this is hiv injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically that means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically if it started in the realm of the spirit it must be adjusted there it doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically some things will never change with counseling hear me some things will never change with time some things will never change with advice you will need a head on collision with the power of god there are families where nobody has risen to any level the last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got when he was almost crossing it drew him back power the power of the holy ghost jesus knew the necessity of this he said tarry in jerusalem don't make a mistake 
of leaving Jerusalem to start anything without empowerment. I've given you the lecture, but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power. I just gave you theory, but what you are going to be seeing there, oh dear, had they not listened to Jesus, you would meet a man called Bar Jesus. You would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer, and she will show you word of knowledge that you had not seen. Listen, let me tell you, the world that is out there is not exactly ignorant it's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic you know many times when we teach like this even me i get uncomfortable sometimes because everything i say looks like a lie except that it is true hmm. it is true it is true Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time regardless of the prayers that were offered. And then they were fasting just like this. Lord, why is the church not growing? And according to him, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked him to go out. And then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry. And he cursed it in the name of Jesus and it rolled like a curtain. From that time, increase began to come. There are people, every good thing you do is misunderstood. It's not normal. Her man was begging. The king called it rape. There are spirits that make good things evil. You come for somebody's program to help him. They say, uh -huh, they have come. You don't come and they say, ah, something is wrong. Is a spirit. Let me tell you, when the devil wants to trap you down, only God can deliver you. Because anything you do will lead to the same result. They box Jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble. It was not the issue of answering correctly or not. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. Listen, let me tell you. There are many things you have discussed. It's time to bring them face to face with God's power. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom and that by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. This is what happened to Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost but not with power. And when he was done fasting, the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power. It takes power to change your situation. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life. Just because God said it does not mean it will happen. There is an energy, there is an agency behind. He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move the power will not move until the word authorizes it but when the word authorizes it and the power is not there it will still be of non effect the dynamics of manifestation is this listen it is not just the union of the word and the power alone it is that the word is what gives authority and then the power is what manifests physically to create the change God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed, don't get too used to these scriptures, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about as a result of the power, 
doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing. The Bible says from morning up until night. Do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice? When everything failed, they started cutting themselves. He said, pray louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And Baal could not answer them. And then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice, there was a time when the angel of the Lord will come to the earth. Angels are not on the earth just all the time. They will respond to prayers. But there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic. Do you know how Haman got the date to destroy Israel? I hope you know there was a date. Haman did not just say to destroy God's people carelessly. Through divination, a spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there. That means every day is not conducive for everything. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Haman, through divination, found out the exact day The same way there are divine appointments, there are also appointments of darkness. I heard a man of God share a very touching story. And when I heard that story, it really, really blessed me. He said there was a lady who was about to travel. She missed her flight. She felt so bad and cried that she missed her flight. Only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed. The family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people the name of the daughter was not there and they said so what happened she missed the flight and so she went to a train the train still crashed those kinds of people are appointed to die so it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this the devil will haunt you until what happens happens just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here is something but then it says to appoint unto them that mourn. The same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today. You can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing. Samaria was never supposed to be delivered. The prophet gave the date for the deliverance. It was, he, listen. Elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway. And maybe he was just privy to an advanced information. No. He said, by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. If he didn't say it, the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue. And they will eat the child, the other child that they were arguing about. Do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed? Do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave? Do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave? There are many people today in the grave who had no business going there. If you're a minister here, please listen to me. We're in the days of his power. If you lack genuine spiritual power, please leave ministry. Just quietly leave ministry. You can find another ministry and help them. But I'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power. The distinguishing factor will be the power of God. Because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve. 
Paul said, and I, when I came to you, he said, remember, Paul was not a dull man. So he was not trying to trivialize knowledge. He says, but when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. That you carry the power of the Holy Spirit like a drug and enter your house with it. You don't need to pray, just enter. And all of a sudden, the foundations of your family begins to shake. What is going on in this family? There is a shaking. What dreams are we suddenly having? It's because someone who represents the ark entered that house. One week after your coming, suddenly three promotions without your prayer one week after your coming a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way this is proof that god is with you let me tell you this the world is truly tired of our stories are we together now and the impatience continues to grow we need a generation of men and women not just preachers men and women who understand the power of the holy spirit many of you are seated here right now buffeted by all kinds of challenges and for many people they think that the answer to those things maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of god there are times that you need the power of God. Some of you join the queue sometimes to see me. And while you are talking, I just say, it's okay. Don't worry. You are tired. Let me explain. I said, it's okay. I know what the problem is. No matter what other examples you will give, it's the same spirit. Like you tell a doctor, the other day I fell down. Let me tell you the scenario that, he said, no, it's epilepsy. He said, no, let me tell you, he said, I found a problem. He said, Even if you say you fell from a bridge, it's still epilepsy. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. Working in me, it's God's ability. God's ability. Hallelujah. This is why we are gathered tonight. This is why we continue to press. Listen. Joshua Selman cannot be in every home. Joshua Selman cannot be in every office. Joshua Selman cannot be in every school. Joshua Selman cannot be everywhere. There is a problem if he's everywhere. You are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in that means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say ah i should come for koinonia but maybe i'm challenged financially and the rest you say i bring you good news that which is there is here here by the spirit he said this is that 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 the prophet spoke about this is it again this is that what is the problem i've been trying to see apostle why because things are not working in my family and then one word one word from you will open the gates this is what god is making and it has nothing to do with being a man of god or a woman of god by the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you good morning sir and he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced 
Jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die. Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was working. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit. Bringing glory to the name of the Lord. As an evidence, a testament of the power of God. But ye shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You shall receive power. Not stories. Power. I'm a businessman. Yes sir. Power. I'm a politician. Yes sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. Let me tell you we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina. The spiritual stamina. The empowerment. How about wealth and increase? Remember the teaching that I did. That you want to prosper. And even your soul to prosper. The devil says no way. You choose one. You can't have both. Either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers. And you say, no, in God's economy, we prosper as our souls prosper. You don't sell your soul to prosper. The world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper. That was the exchange that was happening at the mountain. Give me your soul. What shall it profit? When it talks of profit, the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world. Like pure water and hundred naira. What shall it profit you? If you use this to buy this. The world soul. Trade by butter. Give me your soul. I will give you access to the cosmos. Is God speaking to someone? Let me tell you something. It takes the force of God's power. For things to change. The force of God's power. And yesterday we spoke about one of the keys. Let me just talk very briefly. One area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area. Death. If you remember very carefully. That the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, first instruction, give me your heart. We dealt with that yesterday. So we are switching to the next one. And let thine eyes observe my way. He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry that there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God. And it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie. And the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No. No. In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word. And he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. 
that the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists will chant something in front of a masquerade. No. No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways, how restoration came. Observe my ways, how speed came. Observe my ways, why Satan could not defeat me. He said, be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. You can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my ways. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of God. The methodology, the modus operandi. Please listen very carefully. Things don't just work because they are written in the Bible. Things don't just work because God said they should work. Behind his speakings are his systems. Listen to me. Beyond words, you have to see the lines that connect. This is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? And then he began to explain. To make all men see. There is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken, your eyes suddenly see. This is it. This is where my family is. I've seen it. The word of God becomes for you like a compass. It shows you where you are and where you need to be. And when you have eaten and found it, it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul. Behind the results that we seek, it's not only the word of God, but an understanding of the system allocated for it. Please listen to me. Just because the anointing produced results in an area, does not mean it to produce result in an area. The anointing flow through the channel of your understanding to produce that result. And so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding. Imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water. And then you have a host. You can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered. 
What waters the garden is not the host, but without the host, the water will not reach the garden. That host is your understanding. That is the basis of your faith. Faith is the confidence that you get based on God and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence. It comes through understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. And he breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. We need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have these mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. One of the strange mystery, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas, after praying, they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. Praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve. And sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with her evil and wicked mother who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries allocated for the results that you seek? In a dance, not in a complaint. Praise in a dance. Ah, madam, you're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise in a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. No. When you want to enforce the value system, of God over a spiritual climate. The mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, 
She said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Huh. The mystery of your seed. Now I know that it may have been abused here and there. But very few believers understand the power of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension. And you can connect a seed to your faith. Huh? And smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. And in one week, it didn't pass seven days, God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery that you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration, it does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible, it was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head, whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, no matter what it was, the moment the prophetic came, then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. It's not just about power, power fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head, it doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. When you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water board's assignment to know where your head is or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is. It's their assignment to release water. It's your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body. So the situation happening with you in that bathroom, the water board is not aware. There was something about the way you turn the whole thing and it's not reaching you. Understanding gives value to power. Most people have power but they don't have understanding. So it cannot be coordinated to produce results. We like power because of the charismatism that comes around it. But the efficiency of the power of God is produced on the platter of understanding. There's water in a well. Please help me with this. Look at this. Every well has water. But you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it. You do that, you are going to fall down and die. The water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death. But the water was packaged in a bottle. And 
the bottle, the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth. That's why this is not where you drink from. Are we together? He looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle will be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence and yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this. So I must understand the dynamics of its conversion. To know if I want fresh air, it's a fan I look for. It's still the same divine power. It is the same divine power, but sometimes it is not expressed in prayer. It's expressed in a dance. Sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance. It's expressed in agreement. Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement. It's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow through understanding the more you have spiritual understanding the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life it matters that we have understanding i am powerful i don't doubt you but show me the understanding and i see how far the power can go my understanding is limited to the healing ministry. That is the only area you will see the power of God. You will continue to fast and more power will come. But it will be directed towards that area. The day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom, you will see the power released there. It was always there, but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it. Please get what I'm teaching you. It will not do us much. To just pray and pray and do impartation. And then the area where you are trusting God for. Maybe it's area of speed and promotion. But the only spiritual understanding you have. Is for restoration. The more you pray. The more you see things being restored. But promotion you will not get it. And you wonder. God can't you promote. He says my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. And where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know. And I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment that will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Amen. 
Imagine with me an octopus. Right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. If what you want is restoration, then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor. It will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business. Not prayerful in his business. Diligent in his business. He says he shall stand before kings. There is power in diligence. So when you become diligence, a dimension of God's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence. If you understand what I'm sharing tonight, you will see the knowledge dimension, the understanding dimension of the power of God. Otherwise, there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes. What then is the value of spiritual enlightenment? If the anointing just generically solves problems. Why should you anoint me with oil? Then I study the Bible again. What am I looking for? I know what I'm looking for. I'm giving that grace. Channels. Ah, Those who you call wonders. When you see them. They are not like an octopus. They are like an animal with many, many hosts. So almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding. And the power of God. You see possibilities. That's what we came to do tonight. First, to receive more grace. But second, to say, Lord, this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic would solve his problem, he would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone, say there is a way. It may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge, but there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. Because he can. Everything God says, listen to me, listen to me. When he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy. And the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces results. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened that is not allowing blood to flow because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body. But for some reason, the heart is still pumping blood but something may happen to your vein or your artery or something and just try to create an interference, an inhibition. And for a long time, a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen 
and blood. And as a result, it begins to die. The heart is pumping, but that leg is dying. So it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick. But the police station was waiting for us. Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances. It was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, miracles in different areas because they were prepared i've not met a man of god that can anoint me but while i wait what is the key to wealth while i wait what is the key to speed while i wait so everything is prepared waiting for the oil to come why did he tell the woman borrow vessels borrow many borrow a financial vessel borrow a speed vessel borrow a, a favor vessel Borrow a restoration vessel. If you return, pour the oil. The oil will come on the speed vessel. The oil will come on this vessel. You see, and when there was no more vessel, the oil not died, not changed, not became powerless. The oil limited by the containers. The prophet saw the woman. He said, your husband didn't know what this oil could do. Even as a prophet and he died. You can be a prophet. But when you don't have vessels, you can die. Please tell me we are going to pray. I came with a word from God to tell you. By the grace of God. This is a place of God's power. But power just resting. You can roll from that door to that door. And the power will be there. And the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life. So you will see increased prayer. You are praying again like never before. And you are saying, but God, thank you for the grace for prayer. But I said that I want something in my family. And then you fast again. And then more prayer comes. And then when God wants to help you, he will do to you what he did to Martha. Sit down and listen. Look at how Jesus, do you know Jesus did not do an impartation service every day, but he did a teaching service. His entire training was 99% teaching. And then one day, when they had created channels, he said, now wait, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost came on them, they prophesied, there was word of knowledge, there was salvation, there was healing, because the channels were ready. My son, Give me your heart and observe my ways. Observe my ways. Observe why two people were anointed and yet they could not manifest certain possibilities. This kingdom works through knowledge. The knowledge is not a charm. The dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power. But his divine power flows through the host. Of understanding. The prophets. Desire to know some things. The power that was on them. Was enough to help them. Do certain things. But they were denied. God stopped them and limited them. By hiding certain levels of knowledge. So the anointing could not take them far to see some things. That's why God says we are a chosen generation. In other words, people, the prophets long to see these things. They had the power, but the understanding that will allow the power to take them that far was not there. 
Man of God, my church is not growing. Yet people come and get healed and blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is working through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition. And that, that scripture may be fulfilled. There is a grace that keeps. If you have it, you will keep money. If you have it, you will keep children. If you have it, you will keep blessings. If you do not know the mystery that keeps things, you will have them and lose them. You can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough. You can have good things and leave them. Apostle, every time they pray, I get the result. But it leaves after two weeks. I know what is wrong. His divine power is still there. But there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept. Let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom. You hand them over to God. When you hand over things to God, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. You can't keep that which is committed to you by your power. If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to central bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my may God, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrease and levels. And the anointing just like currency can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value. Every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money. What one million will do is not what hundred thousand will do. If what you have is hundred thousand, you can only buy things from hundred thousand and below. If it's a card, you will not even buy 100,000. He must keep something small. So if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, some can have 10 problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Some has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three, delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? Demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Sam lists all these problems. When I lay hands on Sam, watch this now. The level of anointing I have will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, but you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace, anointing is not anointing, it's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed, not just that he anointed, So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I say, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He says, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter and all this will enter, but that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you, 
There is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes, I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, he brings people with serious issues. Lord, add church members. Then he brings someone deaf from both ears and who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small, not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer, but not healed. Because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings, 21 day stretch, and sick people will come. Sometimes he will not pray for some. He will leave them like that. He will continue studying and growing. One day, he will come back and say, you, come. And that will be it. I now know what he was doing. He was honest with himself. He had a system of gauging. Was it not, was it not Jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me? If it was not doable, the one called certain apostles, they were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing is not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly i casted out the devil out of the gathering but this kind goeth not he was introducing them that there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you that will help you do certain things i've shared a revelation with you that every time people fast and pray it's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy, and that fire burns within you, by yourself, that spirit will leave you. The Bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits. That's why they like water. That's why water is a major part of their habitation. Because there is restfulness there. He makes me lie down in still waters. We are going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. Understanding understanding we will pray for higher dimensions of power but superior dimensions of sight and understanding rise up on your feet please thank the lord for the word you just heard tonight lift your voice and thank him lift your voice and give him praise we are praying Yeah,
Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way to a higher level. Found my way. Greater power. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shala pragadi balada balada ba. Shala pakaruta sada predikatash. Karuda sene makura de shi anabala naba. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey. Feel this temple. With your presence, yeah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, na na na, feel this temple. We wait on you. points number one lord quicken my understanding quicken my understanding grant me access to light spiritual illumination a comprehension of your methodologies tired of guessing tired of shadow boxing tired of hoping Are you praying? Shalabarakatos. We are still praying. Look up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. Mention the area where you need a miracle and say, Lord, what is the understanding that connects your power to that area? Lift your voice and pray. Mention the area. Lord, I desire breakthrough. I desire a job. I desire the spirit of revelation. I desire increase in ministry. What is the mystery? What is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area? Please pray. Shamaraka to se prega de balaraba. Embragatali katabaras. show me oh god like naman a great captain of the syrian army but what is the cure for this leprosy reveal to me by your spirit there is a way there is a way there is a way there is a path which no fowl has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there 
believers if you are a pastor here listen to me that is why communion service is not powerful because most people think it's about sobo and wafa so they said eat the bread and swallow the the drink and then they smile no when you understand the power you will not even be able to hold the communion set understanding they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is more to it. You have done it the way you saw it. There is more to it. We are still going to pray. Father, I'm crying to you. Let my eyes draw a line between your word, my eyes and my situation. Connect something. Show me a key. Connect a mystery. By the spirit. I need speed in my life. Open down my eyes. I need restoration in my life. Open down my eyes. I don't doubt your power. My understanding is limiting your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them and then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. For a long time, you've been anointed, but you wonder why good things leave you. And then suddenly, the law of honor comes to you. You learn that honor is a law, and that when you honor graces, it gives you access. From the lens of that understanding, you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow. I don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor. Your understanding connected you. The power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow. It's not a different power that brings healing. That is a different power that brings miracles. It's the same divine power. But the system of operation is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Understanding. These are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit. Questions that I asked for many years. What is the relationship between knowledge and understanding? Because some people choose knowledge. The word. The word. Other people choose anointing. Power. And I said, Lord, there, there is confusion here. I need you to 
God said, no, there's no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus in the face of your situation. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill? Even when they bring water. Have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last. And it just comes in droplets. And you want to bath, you are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine. And interface it between waterboard and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on, suddenly the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing, but I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt, Lord, I'm a prophet, but upgrade the grace. I've received the anointing for wealth, but upgrade the anointing. A higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Pray. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. Rakata barando sobra a higher level of grace, a higher level of anointing, a higher investment of spiritual power for signs, for wonders, extraordinary results, strange results. Haro Zagabaranda Kata Elakata Pragata Kato Shada Bradias Acts Chapter Nineteen From verse 11. There are a class of miracles. Called special miracles. A miracle in itself is spectacular. But there are miracles. Called special miracles. And they are wrought by the hands of men. Not angels. God wrought special miracles. By the hand of Paul. Read on. So that from his body. This is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body. Were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony. Handkerchiefs and aprons. And diseases departed. When your handkerchief has a voice. is a special miracle. Because a handkerchief is not a living thing. Special miracles. It is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles. No. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. 
I've seen the grace for wealth, but a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts, the revelatory grace, but a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor, but a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. Pray, don't be tired. Hallelujah. Let me share with you something. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're rounding up. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Please give us from verse 8. We're reading three verses. 8 to 10. For this thing. Listen carefully. I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Let's see how God answered this prayer. This is the prayer of a man who was tired of his situation. Listen to how God is answering a man's prayer. He did his best to handle that situation in his strength. And he could not handle it. Now he's asking God for assistance. And God says, my grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. My grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. If it is strength you want, then it must be in exchange for weakness. If there is no darkness, Nepa is useless. Listen to me. Very, very powerful. If there are no sick people, Dr. Emeka is not needed. Are we together? If you are not thirsty, even if there is a bag, a drum of pure water here, it doesn't matter to you. So he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Let me tell you what this happens. It's a mystery. Every time a human being becomes weak, something starts happening to the power of God coming to that direction. Listen carefully. Weakness is powerful because it attracts the strength of God. So when you set your soul to fast, as your body begins to become weak, the same spirit, there is something about your weakness that is calling the power of God. When Jesus stayed for 40 days, the weaker his body, the more the Holy Spirit saw the need to stay. It's a deep spiritual mystery. Jacob wanted a blessing and God looked at him from head to toe. There was no weakness. He said, how do I help you? I have to touch something. There has to be weakness for my strength to be valuable. The treasure cannot be stored in golden vessels. The fact that the vessel is earthen makes the power comfortable so that the excellency of power might be of God. So when you set your soul to fast, God who allowed fasting knows what food does to the body. Listen carefully. If you don't have this revelation, you will not understand what you are doing tonight. Why are you doing a marathon fast that from Wednesday you are not eating down till Friday? Do you want to kill yourself? What kind of nonsense is this they say? You watch what happens. 
there is a level you will get to where you almost want to collapse then watch what happens suddenly like the eagle you will pray and you will be tired have you not noticed that there is a switch every time when you are weak you want to pray you plan to pray for three hours after seven minutes you are tired you don't even know how this will happen but you continue and continue and continue later an agency takes over you and even three hours you can't finish listen listen the power of god hardly starts things he allows you to start and then the power comes and takes you to the flight that's what happens these are very deep spiritual mysteries so these nights that you are not eating now your body is already frustrated there is a level of life and health that the body must have for the mind to walk it's true when you fast your mind also is subject to fasting because your mind feeds off the health of your body that's why when you die your mind does not work so you set your soul to fast every time the nation of israel were about to be overwhelmed by their enemies they will keep their weapons down and declare a fast plus goats plus everything while they are in sackcloth and ashes the spirit of god comes through a prophet this is what god is saying and victory comes i besought the lord thrice take this away from me and it seems like there is a strength in myself that is limiting the power of god so i set my soul in the similitude of weakness through fasting and suddenly his power comes and picks you up many of you will be surprised what will happen it's not hunger starvation it's a mystery that's why i said a joy must be set before you to receive the grace to endure you're going to cry for grace the grace that will keep you through my brothers and my sisters listen let me tell you this let me tell you this if you don't learn this technology you will break down in ministry you see when i left this place i had a meeting till evening it was when i was done just few minutes to the program starting had to tidy up some other things before coming here and i've been standing here you have to learn to exchange your weakness it's a technology you must learn you are more powerful than you are but until you are weak you will not know if a terrorist comes here right now and starts chasing everybody you can run three days without food and you will not be hungry that ability was always there but there was a level of weakness that when your body how do i explain this now holy spirit just believe with me that subjecting you through this spiritual discipline is not a ritual of men my brothers and my sisters i hate the traditions of men and vain religion that has no power we will never practice anything in this ministry that does not have power and spiritual significance He won't stop till your strength looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. Hey, hey. God is raising sons and daughters in this place. He won't stop, he won't stop till our lives look like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till my life looks like him. So when the fast is done, then you will see that your prayer request of 10 years 
comes in one day. And then you say, Lord, what happened? My strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Why does the Bible call fasting humility? Because it's proof that you are weak. And so you call his strength. That they humble their souls in fasting. Lord, if you don't come to help me, I cannot help myself. He says, that's the language I want. Listen. Our fast officially ends tomorrow by one. And then we come for the miracle service. Fire will burn in this place tomorrow. That everything that has not been planted by our God, he must let us go. God declared that it is extraordinary fruitfulness. That is the grace that you must carry. There will be a strong impartation in this place. And God will shift us. You are in ministry. Come with your heart open and come rejoicing. Because things must change. Hallelujah. Whatever challenge, whatever has refused to bow, come with it. Come with it to Jesus. And let us see the power of his grace at work in our midst. Don't forget tonight's teaching. Understanding allows the power to flow to the area where the breakthrough is needed. And that you will need greater dimensions of spiritual power to purchase certain possibilities in the spirit. So let this be your prayer all through tonight. Just because you are weak does not mean you should snore yourself till morning till one. Find a corner even in your weakness. If you have to kneel, kneel. You are allowed to drink water. But please trust God for grace to wake up and pray. If you have a neighbor, you have a friend, tap the person. Say in Jesus name, your destiny is calling you. Wake up. Pray. The virgins slept and there was a call and they didn't have the time to go and buy extra oil and because of that they were in trouble you have to be alert you have to pray and listen for what you will say there are certain things you cannot think about now your body is too weak to allow your mind think it so your spiritual focus is accurate you can trust your hearing The weakness in your body will not allow you to think of the cares of this world. You will be surprised. You will try to think about it and see. Your mind will give up because the body is weak. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So you can focus and pray and your mind will be stayed on Jesus and you travel and push through till victory is established. Father, we give you praise tonight. We honor you and we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us your ways. The way of power. The way of the anointing. The way of strength. The way of grace. Lord, we decree and declare that we are determined for our profiting to be made manifest in this generation. We are not ashamed to obey you. We are not ashamed to be stretched until scripture is fulfilled in our lives. Father, I pray for your people. Let there be a supply of grace. Let our humanity not catch up with us tonight. In the name of Jesus, the strength to push through until tomorrow afternoon, we release it upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. They are new every morning. Always new. Every morning, praise is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord. Praise is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. Day 
till now. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The greatest asset of the believer is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The greatest asset that a believer has is the Holy Spirit. See, if you are in business and you want to start a business, what, would, what do you need? Capital. Is that true? Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate capital. Hallelujah. You know, people say, I need capital. I'm not talking of business now. The capital to do anything in life. You do not know why we celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit and we treasure His presence so much. Because He is the only one who is able to open up the Word of God. To make the Word of God potent. To make the Word of God living and active. And is the one who anoints our lives and makes us amazing wonders. The Bible says, No man can receive anything except it be given to him. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving. As your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son. And leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done. Hallelujah. I have come to treasure him. If you are a wealthy man, there is only so much money can do. Money cannot heal a sick body. Hallelujah. Money cannot cure barrenness. Money cannot drive demons. If you are educated, education does not scare demons. Education does not cause a man to live long. Mm. If you are handsome or beautiful, beauty does not give people food. Otherwise, the beautiful Niger children roaming around will have no reason to be staying on that bridge. Is that true? If you can speak English, that's very good. But there are many intelligent people who have not been able to do much in their lives. But when you have this great spirit of the living God, you can solve the problem of the greatest man in the earth. Ah, this makes you more than a conqueror. See, treasure the spirit of God. This is called koinonia. If you do not value the presence of the Holy Spirit, see, the Holy Spirit will make you a much desired personality. They turn to Jesus and they said, All men seek for you. Why? 
because there is this treasure in earthen vessels the poor will look for you the sick will look for you the oppressed will look for you those who are confused will look for you it's impossible to have and honor the ministry of the holy spirit in your life and remain a failure it's impossible this world is too dark for his presence not to be recognized in the life of any man the darkness of the world is a big advantage for the believer because the the smallest spark of light makes you an enviable object and every week we teach on different topics but then we always take time to let us understand that our intimacy and fellowship with the Holy Spirit is the greatest asset we have in this place. He's the only one who can make this Bible come alive. You can go to theology school and confuse yourself and not even be blessed again. But when His presence comes upon this word and it opens you oh no come on see let me tell you something the Holy Spirit can take you from where you are please pay attention pay attention stop trying to look for only what his presence can give see that we are chasing after things that only his presence can give do you not see that if you take the spirit of god and his ministry in your life to be filled with the holy spirit does not mean you are led by the spirit you allow your life to come under this governing influence i'm telling you he will make you a wonder beyond your imagination Take me to the place, the secret place, that holy place, that's where I want to be. Take me to the place, the secret place. Hey, ba, 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 la, da, ba, ko, sa, That's where I want to be. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to everyone in this place. Make yourself real. Make yourself real. Make yourself real. You are the keys of David. You are the one who can anoint the head of a man and turn an ordinary man to become a global wonder. Lord, this is our request. Let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Just the symbol. Let me be a holy habitation. Where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of Fill this vessel. Fill 
this vessel. Fill this vessel. Fill this vessel. Take your place. 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 body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Take your place. 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 body my soul my spirit take my body my soul my spirit take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me je na 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 ma sha na na ba la na na ma je na 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 ma ri na ba how I desire your presence I desire your presence I desire your You are the fountain of life You are the fountain of life You can take anyone to the place of the blessing, to the place of your glory. la la Take us, Lord, take us, Lord, to the place of your glory. Take your place. 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 Take your
take your place 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 have your way have your way have your way have your way feel my life feel my life feel my life take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul and my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul and my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul and my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul take my body my life Lord, we desire you more than life itself. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, and my spirit. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. See, listen, let me tell you. There is nothing you are truly looking for that you will ever find if the Holy Spirit does not lead you there. Are you hearing me? There is nothing, I don't care what it is. There is nothing you are truly looking for. Success, prosperity, husband, wife, job. You will never find it if you disregard the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you in advance, you will never ever find it until the Holy Spirit leads you there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. You will never find it if it does not lead you there. You can pretend you have found it. You will never find joy. You will never find fulfillment. All of these things people chase after. No. You will never find it disregarding the Holy Spirit. He has become my all. He has become my all. He will turn an ordinary person. See, let me tell you something. Listen. This chase for recognition. This chase for fame this chase for greatness will keep ending people in utter frustration 
until the Holy Spirit leads you there. Please take what I'm saying seriously. I'm yet to see one man that truly found life and all it can give with the true joy and satisfaction without the Holy Spirit. It's not true. It's not true. I, I need you to understand that I'm, these things are not just done as a religious jamboree. Some of us have never paid attention to the things of the Spirit. We think if I just come, it's possible to be here right now and your heart is not even with God. You are just here and then you will find out that you will never get that blessing. Are you not tired of trying to find fulfillment outside of Him? Why don't you settle down? Come. Be on His side. And see what you will make out of your life. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted. And there is nothing you can't do. O oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified, O oh Lord, be magnified. See, we said this thing years ago. And many people thought we were just talkatives and jokers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This thing, I've been saying this thing for years. But when you don't pay attention to the things of God, your suffering has just begun. Because there are many people after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of a meaningless life of utter frustration, they find out that everything they have put their confidence on has failed one by one. The dangerous thing about that kind of failure is it all does not happen in one day. It will keep happening again. After one cycle finishes, another cycle of failure will start. But the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. Choose that way now. I choose the way of the Lord for the way for the way of the Lord is the way of I choose the way of the Lord His presence can guarantee you anything in life when you honor God's presence for you Success is an issue of when, not if. It no longer becomes magic. Hallelujah. I'm teaching tonight on a very powerful topic. And I like your heart to be open. Look 14. Jima katabala Luke 14. Hallelujah. Say after me, my Christianity must produce an evidence. Say it, my Christianity must produce results. Say it like you believe it, my Christianity must produce results. I forbid you from this resultless Christianity that frustrates you and frustrates those around you. When there is an evidence in your life that God is real and that the truths in his word are real, let me tell you the truth. You will compel men to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you will turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. 
There's gotta be more than this For desperate people do desperate things We press in need There's gotta be more, gotta be more Help me say There's gotta be more than this Hallelujah I can never be a failure in life never 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 i've left that cycle forever till jesus comes i told you last week understanding everybody say understanding when you have he said in all thy getting get understanding come mike come climb these stairs no just stay down climb up climb up did you need to think to climb this because you know how to do it go back and do it again this is we call predictability your life can be that accurate and that circumspect that you know that you know that you know that you know that you have come out of certain realms forever your life can be that predictable that you can become a success so for you it's a matter of when not if there are some of us success is still at the realm of if because we are still hoping that one day bless you god will see what i'm doing and then maybe he will just bless me let me tell you in advance you don't need to wait till after 10 years let me tell you now you are wasting your time it will not work that way there are keys he said and i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said by reason of that keys whatever you bind in the earth will be bound in the heavens whatever you lose until you have these keys you cannot command authority in this realm many of us have been listening but we have not been paying attention today is an opportunity again why don't you tell yourself look i want to settle down let me understand this thing once and for all hallelujah i'm preaching tonight on extraordinary accomplishments the cost extraordinary accomplishments colon the cost what does it take to be a sign and a wonder? What does it take to be a living wonder? What does it take to function in this earth realm as if you are not a normal human being? What does it take to ride towards the things that force men to bow to? We have been, throughout last month, we were taking a series on success. And I thought we had rounded up until I was praying. And the Lord told me, no, there's one more extraordinary accomplishments the cost tonight i want to open you up to the cost dimension of accomplishments in life the cost dimension hallelujah this word cost and price these are two words that many believers hate we hate that word the moment you say cost or price people just resent it and they get angry but when you say gift or reward people say aha this is what i want but the moment you say cost we hate opening up ourselves to the cost implication of life unfortunately let me tell you the truth get it straight and get it this night i don't care who preaches what for you don't mislead yourself you will never never enter the realm of true greatness and extraordinary accomplishments if you deny the fact that there is a price and there is a cost so the first thing i want you to know this night is that extraordinary accomplishment is very costly it's very costly it's not just costly it's very costly Number two, 
ignorance and failure is also very costly. So, whether you embrace the life that will bring supernatural accomplishments or not, you are going to pay the price in this life. Period. Hallelujah. Outstanding success has a, a huge price tag. It's very costly. Failure also has a price tag. It is also costly. The difference is this. For accomplishment and success, you pay the price before it comes. For failure, you pay the price after it comes. You get that? But you are going to pay the price in any way. So you can choose to pay it now. You don't need to say, I claim success. No, you don't need to claim it. If you pay the price now, that is your act of faith to show that you have chosen. You don't just choose by saying, I choose alone. He said, if you call yourself the sons of Abraham, you would do what Abraham did. Hallelujah. People hate the word cost. They hate the word price. And so many people, especially preachers, have tried to create nice messages to explain away the fact that there is a cost implication to supernatural accomplishment. Let me tell you something. Go and ask any man, whether in the secular world or in the Christendom, who has risen to and made any level of supernatural accomplishment of whatever sort ask them and they will tell you there is a price to pay hallelujah the one time wealthiest man in america was asked a question he said what is the secret of success and he laughed he said secret number one know what the price is number two pay the price period know what it is pay the price and tonight i pray for you that the fear of paying the price for a supernatural life let that fear leave you because let me tell you something you are afraid of what must come so it's better to develop courage and face it once and for all remember we preached the message give me this mountain in every mountain there are giants if you find a mountain that there are no giants run away every mountain there are giants life is full of men who paid several prices defied certain things and today the world is celebrating them and if you must do much for god there is a price to pay don't let anybody fool you there is a price to pay hallelujah and tonight we will look at the cost factor the cost implication hallelujah if we do not want to end up like many people that we have seen or many believers frustrated humiliated then it's important to pay the price right now i will always quote this scripture lamentations 3 27 he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth now that you have strength why don't you make up your mind to flog it out with destiny so that you can enter the sabbath and rest once and for all the bible says and on the seventh day god rested i've said it again and again if you have not entered your seventh day and you are resting let me tell you life will kick you out of that rest in a painful way you only rest when you have entered your seventh day some from day one they're already seeking rest we live in a generation of comfort we like comfort hallelujah a lot of people like com we love comfort we hate inconvenience no no don't keep me standing for 10 minutes uh -uh, i can't take it ah the sun is too hot go and buy umbrella for me we 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 are addicted to comfort to a to a a degree that it is robbing us of paying the price for a glorious destiny 
Hallelujah. Someone starts a business. The first profit that comes is buying jeans and shoe and buying one, one rickety car that you keep maintaining it for the next how many years until everything eats up his money. But to pay the price and say, oh, let me just wait. Let me endure. No, I want to prove a point. I want to prove a point. Comfort. Comfort has destroyed a lot of people. Comfort is good. But you see, let me tell you something. When it gets to a point where it stops you from paying the price, then you are, you are eating your future in your today. And this is the case with a lot of people. Hallelujah. This is what has birthed this false and fake life that people live. They try to pretend realms of success they have not yet come into. And so they put themselves under unnecessary pressure. Hallelujah. It's very important. Say after me, I will pay the price. Please say it. I will pay the price. Look at me. Don't you think this message is not important this night? Because I, I'm going to be attacking some ugly religious spirits that always think that when you are teaching about success and accomplishment, they think it's not spiritual enough. I thought we just came and we should be praying or I thought we should come and do this sooner or later your lack of paying attention will punish you to a point that you will backslide spiritually without knowing hallelujah when you become a father and you know that you cannot be praying from morning till night you have the fees of children to pay is that true you have responsibilities at that point you will know that one key does not open every door in the spirit. It takes keys. And opening up yourself to them. May your children never look at you. And say daddy what is, what is the benefit of all of this Christianity. May people not look at you in the village. And say you are, you are an unbeliever. I am a Christian. What is the difference? See let me tell you something. The kingdom of God. Is a reward system are you following me now the kingdom of god operates on a reward system so you are rewarded for complying with kingdom principles i made up my mind years ago that i was going to end some things in my life forever and I knew that to do that, comfort will be out of the way. And this is my first encouragement for you this night. Take this unnecessary spirit of luxury and comfort. It's not bad. Pack it up and keep it. A day will come when you will be comfortable indeed. Not now. The Bible says the vision will speak at the end. No vision speaks at the beginning. He says it in the end it will speak. Hallelujah. Another deceitful approach to success is waiting for God to do everything. Have you seen people like that? I know God will do it. I know my God will do it. Are you not the king of the heavens? You can do anything you want to do. You can bless whoever you want to bless. You can curse whoever you want to curse. Let me tell you straight to the point. If that is your philosophy, then your suffering has not yet begun. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. He said, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. If you do not take charge of your destiny, you may be very surprised. Hallelujah. I'm going to be talking about three aspects three levels of the cost number one we'll quickly look at the spiritual cost the first cost is the spiritual cost you want to live a life of extraordinary supernatural accomplishments no matter who you are the first price to pay 
is your spiritual life the spiritual cost hallelujah there are many of you right now if i ask you what are you doing towards your success you say i'm trying to look for money i'm looking for capital may god just bless me let me just get money and see what i will do or somebody is running somewhere and say i'm just trying to look for a job i'm trying to look for this and we pay very little attention if at all for some of us our spiritual lives we wake up in the morning 5 30 stand at, 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 at the junction outside and you see everybody waking up in the morning hurrying running from morning until night ask them what they are looking for they tell you i want to move forward i want to make progress i want to make meaning out of my life but the bible says except the lord builds the house he said the word there is not except the lord build it for you except the lord becomes the architect of the house he says they labor in vain and except the lord watches over his city said the watchman watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he give it to his beloved sleep hallelujah let's look at the scripture quickly second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 if you're there say amen verse 5 are you there verse 5 it says this is speaking about the king Uzziah listen please he said and he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and he said oh I thought it was projected he said as, and as long as he sought God what happened God made him prosper is that in your Bible as long as he sought God what happened so his prosperity his accomplishments in life were directly tied to his passion genuine passion for God many of us do not have a passion for god we only love god because we have been told that he is mighty and if you come close to him maybe he will drive demons away from your life and then success will come quickly if you want to be blessed and to do much for god in this kingdom the first requirement is your spiritual life uzziah he sought God. He says as long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Let's read on. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of God. Look at his accomplishments. Look at the mighty things that he did because God was with him. And the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him. Did you see that now? God did what? God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who dwelled in Gubal and in Milnim. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. Look at all the things that happened in his life because he sought God. Let's read on. And his name spread abroad this is the fame many people are looking for and his name why he sought god he sought the health of his spiritual life first he was not just seeking fame and power in the bible everyone who truly sought god made a mark in this life listen to me the first cost is your spiritual life Let's finish up. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Nine. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. Look at these accomplishments. At the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. In the desert. He built towers in the desert. Do you know how the desert sand is? The desert sand is not solid 
whatever you build if you are not careful but he said he built towers in a desert extraordinary accomplishment because he sought God hallelujah and he dig many wells for he had much cattle both in Shephelah and in the plains husband men also and vine dressers in the mountains and so on and so forth read verse 11 he said moreover Uzziah had a host of fighting men who is this strange man that was just breaking records smashing records again and again defying the things that had been done in his days the bible tells us his secret he said he sought god he sought god look at this kind of exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits it doesn't just happen by magic let's finish up we'll read to verse 15 who went out to war by bands according to the numbers of their reckonings by the hand of jael the scribe hallelujah and then let's read verse um, 14 and uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and slings to cast stones verse 15 and he made in jerusalem what engines the first person in the bible recorded to invent engines this guy broke through in several circles the bible says that he invented them invented by cunning men to be on the towers upon the bulwarks so that when they came to attack them they used engines to defend themselves extraordinary accomplishments because of the quality of his spiritual life he said to shoot arrows and great stones without listen he said and his name spread where notice the bible in the previous verse said his name spread abroad now see another dimension his name spread far abroad he said for he was marvelously helped the first time he was helped now he was marvelously helped until he was strong have you been paying attention have you been paying this spiritual price Oh, there is a spiritual price to pray for success and the beautiful thing is that at any point in your life you can start are you hearing what i'm saying so peradventure your spiritual life has not been an issue for you you just believe that somehow you can navigate yourself through life let me tell you right now hear the voice of the lord he said i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in hell to the proportion to which your soul prospereth we have neglected the spiritual prosperity of the soul our intimacy and our relationship there are many things that can distract us looking for money looking for success wanting connection wanting to go here and there wanting to go abroad germany italy dubai everybody wants to go let me tell you something if you pay attention to your spiritual life first you will be helped the holy ghost is called a helper and the bible says uzziah was marvelously helped he enjoyed a rich dimension of the holy spirit let me tell you when god backs you you must succeed it doesn't matter what the odds are say i take my spiritual life seriously the spiritual cost under the spiritual cost the first price you need to pay is revelation and wisdom everybody say revelation you want to accomplish much spiritually in this kingdom we're talking about your spiritual cost now revelation and wisdom paul prayed to the church especially in uh, uh, the, the the church in 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 ephesus ephesians 1 from verse 17 down he said i pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The heart of your understanding, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Revelation and wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to take the truth of God's word and put it into practical application to deliver results for you. 
anything you claim to know that is not useful in your life is not advancing the kingdom is not improving the quality of your life dump it it's a waste of time wisdom is not just the right application of knowledge it's the ability to take the truth of god's word and offer solution to life's problems and the bible says daniel 12 verse 3 it says and they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens daniel 12 he said and they that be wise shall do what shall shine as the brightness you want to be a star you want to rise above get wisdom get revelation understand how things work in the spirit when you understand the spiritual laws that are responsible for delivering certain results i promise you life will bow to you hallelujah are you listening to me so pay the price let your spiritual growth be constructive it's not just coming to church and learning all the nice spiritual languages go for revelation this is what we seek to teach not revelation of stories principles keys 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 i will give you the keys of the kingdom when you find the key to this door you can open it when you find the key to this door you will open it when you find the key to that door you will open it if you do not have the door you can pretend the door is open but sooner or later life will demand you to go outside and it will be evident that you do not have the key there are many people pretending to have found it rather than humbling themselves to say no look let's take this thing can i tell you something no matter how long find it he said the kingdom of god is like a man who is searching for a pearl when he found it he sold everything he had to buy that land when you pay the price to get revelation it will reward you please listen to me finance in the kingdom has spiritual laws health in the kingdom has spiritual laws victory over sickness and death and failure has spiritual laws success in life has spiritual laws favor has spiritual laws they don't just happen a good marriage is governed by spiritual laws hallelujah longevity in life is governed by spiritual laws how many of these laws do you know that is how you can measure the quality of your life i want to ask you a very practical question how many of these laws do you know hallelujah very important revelation 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 when you love the lord with all your heart he will open you up to revelations first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for them that speak in tongues for them that love him when you love god he will open you up to secrets and brother when you find it you have found it forever when you truly love god and for as long as he sought the lord god made him to prosper have you been seeking the lord in your quest for accomplishment have you been paying a, is god part of your success equation i love the lord with all my heart the bible says in first kings 3 verse 3 it says and solomon loved the lord solomon loved that's what that's that was the basis of everything that he did and solomon loved the lord do you really love the lord enough to seek him with all your heart to seek to know his ways and how do you know those who love the lord it's very clear john 14 21 so don't just say i love the lord we are going to see it now john 14 21 hallelujah 
he says he that keepeth my commands he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father so who is the one that loves god please listen who is it who is the one that loves god he didn't say the one who claims i love god i love god i love god uh -uh. if you truly love him he will abide by his commands he said and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and i will do what manifest reveal myself god is not revealing himself to everybody there are certain people that attract him with their passion for him this is a big secret let's look at verse 23 of the same verse but same chapter sorry jesus answered and said if a man love me he will do what he will do what so have you been keeping his words if you have not been keeping his words you do not love him period if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him are you seeing there and make our habitation our abode this is the secret of intimacy love for god the bible says the secret things of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants many people let me tell you the truth many people want to serve god but they don't love the lord they respect god though they are christians they are not doing but that passion for god they don't have it and then they wonder why god seems to make himself real to other people i've shown you the secret of intimacy if you truly love the lord you will attract him by creating the atmosphere that brings his presence love for god hallelujah let me share with you under revelation just three keys that will guide us we are still under the spiritual cost and under that we are still under revelation so love for god i've told you love for god is one key to intimacy the presence of god you can have power without loving god it's impossible to have the presence of god without loving him no number two obedience obedience is very important everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience everything 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 in the kingdom is tied to obedience just one scripture so that we we'll put it under there deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you hallelujah he said you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 so obedience 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 doing the word faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said so love the key to the presence of god the key to deep secrets in the spirit obedience the key to committing god in anything you are doing the bible says you are only willing to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete he told cain cain was angry because abel's sacrifice was being received and his own was not being received he told cain he said if you do what your brother did will your sacrifice not be accepted so obedience anytime you want god to show up and to perform in your life make sure you obey his principles the last key that i'll talk about quickly under revelation is the law of tithing let me shock you very quickly tithing has nothing to do with money look at me tithing does not bring money the bible never tied tithing to money let me tell you what tithing does hallelujah sorry many people tithe because they want money wrong tithing as a principle and as a key in the kingdom has nothing to do with financial prosperity it is your giving that brings financial increase are you hearing me tithing opens the heavens see listen listen look at me there's no time we have to touch other aspects and i want us to pray please look at me 
the bible says god created many trees in the garden of eden is that true but god kept a tight in that garden of eden i want to show you where titan started from so long as that tight was not touched the heavens were open god could come in the cool of the day is that true please answer me tight thing is one of the spiritual laws that is responsible for open heavens so whatever you do under that open heavens will now prosper that's why tithing does not just affect finance alone health longevity different aspects of our lives the reason why we preachers only reduce tithe to money is simply because we want the money period The day man touched the tide, what happened? The heavens were closed and they sent him out of the garden of Eden. Look at how important tithing is to God. So long as man did not touch the tide, he could enjoy any other tree. He touched the tide, God sent him out. So every many of us are operating under closed heavens. You are giving but under closed heavens. You are serving God, but under closed heavens. Let me tell you something. I don't care whatever you do. See, the devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. He operates on legal grounds. Principalities operate on legal grounds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means you, can, you don't pray them away. You don't pray them away. There are kingdom principles that keep them at bay. Please understand this. He said, in my name, they shall cast out what? But he said, they overcame them by, it is in my name. Many of us have been praying, trying to cast away principalities in our lives. No, it is your obedience of kingdom principles that keep them far. That means if you are not a tighter, even God, cannot stop the devourer it will take only the blood to speak for you are you hearing me please in the series that are coming i will teach you about the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood because the bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit he said these three are in agreement he said but in the earth realm there are three that three entities that can open any door in this realm the spirit the water that's the word of god and what the blood he said and these three agree anything they agree on that door must open hallelujah these are very deep spiritual principles there are many of you you have prayed and fasted about some things it didn't change that's to tell you that your spiritual approach may be wrong hallelujah let's continue tithing the heavens will open over you everybody say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be faithful i need my heavens open see when your heavens are open you will know you will know your heavens are open one time i was praying i think around chapel and the lord showed me a vision i looked up and i saw like two ancient gates they were closing and opening closing and opening i said lord what is the meaning of this and the lord told me this is the heavens opening and closing over people and this is the faithfulness of tithing please take this serious tithing does not bring money tithing opens the heavens when the heavens are open anything done under that open heavens will succeed you see why some of you have been giving you have been giving to the poor you have been giving to the needy things are not working because the heavens are closed the devourer just needs to look at your heavens and know whether he's permitted to come to your life or not this is a powerful key that many many ministries there are many ministries who love god great preachers but they are living under closed heavens so they don't know why members don't come have you seen people complain like that members come and go members do this and that i will train people and then they will leave let me tell you something check it if you are not careful the heavens are open the heavens are closed sorry when your heavens are open you will see extraordinary things that you know only god can do 
you can't negotiate this principle god is not a politician there's no back door no shortcut hallelujah so have you been faithful in tithing if you have not been faithful in tithing stop saying god is responsible for what you are in you have permitted the devourer there are many of us who are in business you don't tithe many of us god blesses us you don't tithe see if you do it out of force it's not by faith and whatever is not of faith is sin you just wasted your time it is a product of a revelation how can i eat the tithe of god here is my heart my mind make up your mind lord no touching your tithe if you are faithful you will live in eden when you touch the tithe you are sent out of eden when they sent man out of eden toiling and all kinds of things there are many of you truly it's not like god is not blessing you but it does not work the bible says and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper take this tithing thing serious the number one key you need to teach people about open heavens is tithing don't think this is a gimmick by preachers if you come and pay the tithe and the preacher eats the tithe it's god that will punish him but you do your part do not allow anybody's negligence to stop you say am i sure it's not that usher that will carry my money what is your business make up your mind buy envelopes many of us are owing god you say god let me touch this five thousand please this is an emergency i must respond to it immediately and the devourer is saying go ahead please go ahead the moment you take it <laughs> you are just convinced that because you took communion or they made cross with oil on your head the devourer goes and you just fall down and stand up and say thank you jesus the devourer is waiting for you the moment you come out the oppression continues i'm telling you kingdom principles supernatural accomplishment starts with an open heavens he said you will see the heavens open the moment the heavens are open angelic activities begin in your life when jacob saw the heavens open what happened angels started ascending and descending and jesus told nathaniel he said you are you are shouting because you have just seen these things he said you will see greater things what are the greater things you will see the heavens open and the angels every time angelic activities are scarce in your life check your heavens may be closed hallelujah number two prayer so revelation one and then prayer prayer you must pray you must pray it's one of the greatest spiritual investment now i've had preachers even on tv talk against prayer and they say pray 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 you pray you don't pray all you just need is the word 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 <laughs> listen let me tell you the honest and sincere truth the bible says we will not leave the ministry of tables i mean the ministry of uh, we will not concentrate on serving tables we'll focus on the ministry of the word and prayer hallelujah a prayerless christian is a powerless christian period whatever destroys your prayer life has killed your christian heritage it's a dangerous spiritual investment that you must make it will build your spirit you will build sensitivity the gifts of the spirit will find expression the anointing of the spirit will be at work in your life and the anointing itself is capital everybody say anointing is capital yes we only know naira and cobble and dollars and pounds to be capital anointing is big capital are you hearing me the anointing can open doors for you that nothing else will open anointing is great capital all men seek for thee that's what they told jesus why were they seeking for him because he had an anointing do you know that if you have an anointing the uncle you are trying to talk to that is neglecting you he needs something that the anointing upon your life can solve you concentrate and build that capital i have entered places today that if i was not anointed there is no way on earth at this level of life those doors would have opened impossible impossible
Hallelujah. Prayer. Let's look at the second cost. Spirit move over me. Spirit move over me. Intellectual cost. Everybody say intellectual cost. Say it intellectual cost. So the first cost is your spiritual cost for supernatural accomplishment. Second cost is intellectual cost. Help us, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 5, verse 13. Everybody, be, while you are opening, I'd like you to shout, Knowledge is power. Knowledge. Not, not that school. Along high Say, knowledge is, knowledge is power. Say it again. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Hallelujah. Knowledge is truly power. If you value knowledge and you value information, you will do wonders in this earth realm. Please listen. This is where I want everybody to give us our attention because I know for many of us, the spiritual cost, we are paying it very well. But probably, we are not paying the intellectual cost. Knowledge is power. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Everyone read. One to read. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with test. Why? Knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. Say information. What you do not know can destroy you. Ignorance is not an excuse in this realm. In the world of champions, you don't give room for ignorance. Many of us are spiritually serious, but we are mentally lazy. We are not willing to pay the price. Preachers, hear me. MOG, wake up. Many preachers are intellectually lazy. And they wonder why they are not commanding results. Hallelujah. Sustainable success is guaranteed by quality access to information. Your access to quality information about any area of life that you are trusting God to be an ambassador whether business whether your job there are many people who may never be promoted till Jesus comes because they are praying in tongues they are paying spiritual prices but they are neglecting their intellectual price look at me see honesty is good but that's not the only thing that is required in delivering results competence is key and competence is a product of intellectual prowess are you listening to me many nigerians have dreams and visions there are many books dream big have a great vision that's wonderful but just having a dream or a vision may never bring it to pass you must re you must get the knowledge and the information it takes to push that vision from being a dream until it starts walking on two legs everybody say intellectual cost ignorance is very costly i told you very very costly he said i daniel understood by books this book of the law the bible says this book not this chase magazine not this pointless novel this book many of us do not invest in building our intellectual capacity somebody comes and say god is calling me i'm going to be a public speaker i saw it in a vision i saw myself wearing suit like pastor femi you may die and never enter that revelation if you are not ready you think we are going to bring you to come and present a paper for us when you don't you've not read any book on public speaking you don't know anybody hallelujah you're not opening up yourself to learn from people who have gone ahead of you you will never arrive there this is what will frustrate you more many christians are frustrated because they cannot understand why although they are praying although they love god they see that they are lazy intellectually 
go to the house of many believers you don't find anything somebody is walking in his job he's never read any book to improve him does not understand anything about people's skills does not understand anything about leadership many pastors are governing churches all they know is how to pray in tongues and preach well they have no knowledge of corporate leadership they have no knowledge of corporate financing hallelujah principles of conflict resolution they do not know these things they don't care principles of church growth they don't care hallelujah praise the lord it's very important many of us do not pay the price to build ourselves intellectually you believe god is calling you to be a reality a tv show or a hostess or host or marriage and whatever and you sit down people ask you what do you know about marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman to be a husband and wife do you know listen listen see no matter how tongue talking you are are you hearing me if i want to employ people and i see that you are going your your intellectual deficiency is a disadvantage to my corporation do you think i will employ you please answer me so why are you angry with god there are many people who are not interested listen this is important they are not interested in building themselves they don't build capacity how many books do you have in the area you believe god is sending you to see let me tell you we live in a world where the basic knowledge you get from university is not enough are you hearing what i'm saying listen there must be an added advantage the difference between the five virgins who were wise was that they took extra oil there are many people who go into business they don't know anything about the business they just hear somebody went to dubai and went and brought containers you too you stand up carry everything you have home and abroad they go and throw you away from the airport say you are going to dubai they seize all of your goods now you come back god is not faithful i'm a titan no no everybody say intellectual prowess psalms 45 verse 4 can we look at it quickly we're going to pray psalm 45 verse 4 God is doing something in this place. He said, listen, and in thy majesty, write prosperously because of what? Truth. Information. Write prosperously because of the truth that you know. Write prosperously. Bishop Oedeko said something that touched me in a very powerful way. He said, most restaurants, you can go abroad and see certain restaurants and they tell you this restaurant is 50 years old is that true this restaurant is 70 years old the owner has died yet the restaurant is still on in nigeria somebody opens a restaurant after two two years he has fought with everybody in that community till they close the restaurant and the person is a christian everybody say after me your intellect your mind must be transformed for you to accomplish supernaturally i tell you i i feel the fire of god in this place i must burn this enough buy books buy books not trainers buy books not with all buy books not mary Kay. the books will buy you mary Kay. See, he said, buy the truth. Sell it not. There are certain things I do every day before I sleep. Every day. Some of you sleep from morning till night. You are just happy. Lazing around. You come and see people reading and you say, oh boy, you self now, wow, what are you reading? You keep distracting people. There is a name for those people. They are called enemies of progress. How many of us pay attention there are many of us visitation hopping from house to house hopping to people's office gossiping and discussing things that have no bearing to your future great men hear me are men who have learned to settle down and build their minds that you are a christian is no guarantee 
for you to allow yourself to be mentally lazy they give you a speech to prepare you didn't prepare for it you are not serious about it god has brought favor lack of intellectual preparation kill the favor out of your life hallelujah there are many of you oh god is calling me into decoration what do you know about decoration how many books show me the dvds you are watching about those who have who are champions in decoration and you come and just keep sleeping dirty pieces of paper for people please give me a contract i am a christian i'm your member so what so what oh i can make hair don't patronize that person is an unbeliever patronize me the person patron he said plot me all back you plot like this yet you think that the person will just say okay you are a nice christian are you contending to improve yourself i improve myself every day i'm not satisfied with where i am in every area of my life show me what you are doing to build your mind show me the investments you are making mentally and i can tell you whether you will be part of the world changers or you'll be part of the storytellers are you listening to me very important lay your hands on your head and say after me in the name of jesus i receive grace to build my mind i will buy books i will buy dvds i will build myself in the area i've been called to function i will be the best i will not relent until i am the best say i will not relent i refuse to be a local champion i'm a global champion hallelujah yes make up your mind refuse to be a local champion a brother is is, is getting married and all he has home and abroad is 200,000 so they called you and gave you 10,000 for decoration you just did every kind of ugly thing and they say who did this they say you they say oh well done you just believe that another time you say i'm carrying a proposal to abuja you carry your file and you are moving to go and disgrace yourself in abuja when you go there you will see other people who have worked upon themselves when you see their designs you just stand there as if god failed you please take seriously what i'm saying believe us Build yourself every day there are four things i do on before i sleep i must build myself spiritually i must build myself corporately i must build myself in leadership what are you doing what do you do with your 24 hours many of you early in the morning they saw you in samaru later on you are in Hindogo. later on you are around and you just come and say I'm, I'm, i had a busy day doing busy but doing nothing nothing you went to go and gossip jakes kajikwa you now run to another person you did this stop it if you have been doing that great leaders are not like that if somebody comes and is disturbing you don't be afraid to tell the person sorry i'm doing some studies i'm praying some of you are embarrassed you don't want to be bad ah. create a protocol around your life let nobody just jump in and out of your life because they think they want to see you you are studying at that point illumination is coming somebody just bashes in over oh, anything for the boys politely tell the person I'm, I'm in a period i'm birthing something that can take my family from where they are to mount ararat and take them to a place where they will be great do you not know samadhyam he says ideas rule the world there are many of you if only you pay attention the truth is god tried for you you are very intelligent you are just not serious you can't sit down and pay the price and you know something listen the truth is if you really really want to be great god will open the way for you the reason is many of us do not want it bad enough that's why the way has not opened i don't care what it is you want if you desire it truly he said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart there is a level of passion 
when I want things I get them oh yes I get them I will pay any price to get it for me pain is not an issue hallelujah when I travel and people who have gone ahead of me in any area of life are talking I get a biro I'm just listening to them ardently or I'm just typing on my phone I'm listening to the wisdom they are bringing while I'm listening I'm reaching out to my pocket finding any seat there to connect you see let me tell you I, I taught this already in commanding results the law of honor things do not just happen are you hearing what I'm saying things are made to happen the truth is whatever area it is you are trusting God to go to there are people who are carriers of that grace there are people who have that knowledge you want to plot you believe you want to start a saloon have you gone to somebody who has who has a saloon and tell the person see i have two thousand naira. can i give you this two thousand naira and be coming every day and be learning for one hour i plead with you say me i started plotting somebody this all these people this arrogance is what has kept a lot of people humility if you do not humble yourself you will never build your mind don't wait for people who have solution to come and meet you doctors don't look for sick people they establish an institution called a hospital and the sick people look for them passionately and even in the hospital there are different kinds of words according to your desperation there is a word called emergency word when you really need help badly they take you to that word life has emergency word there are many people who you can get tired of your life that you say no i'm not going to any i'm going to an emergency world build yourself build yourself oh god wants to make me a pastor and god showed me in a vision i'm going to have 1000 branches my brother start getting going for knowledge before you die early the trouble of managing yourself is even killing you and you want to manage 1000 branches full of members see this is why god does not answer the prayer of a lot of people they they want crowd they do not know the complexities that come with managing people every day there is a case somewhere somewhere this is what was wearing moses away and his father jethro in law um, uh, his father-in-law jethro began to give him a key on how to he would have died for nothing there are many men of god who are dying because they are doing everything everything because they do not understand the principle everybody say i receive grace to build my mind jordan bookstore is there you can start let me see how many of you believe that you are going to do business let me see your hands business people whether potentially or presently what are you doing in that line of business keep your hands lifted so that i will what are you doing are you doing anything or you are just coveting other people who have gone ahead and say hi god oh, this is lucky oh. please drop your hands take it seriously you want to do business behave like a businessman don't behave like a thief how many of you believe that god has called you into one form of leadership or the other whether corporately almost everybody should be lifting their hands you are either a father or a mother at least what are you doing to build? no i'm serious what are you doing to build it i build myself every day i interact with the brightest of the brightest of the brightest i love everybody but i will not learn from everybody i want to shorten my journey as much as possible so i'm not ready for anybody to bring his mediocrity and make and punish me then after many years go for the best say go for the best tell your neighbor go for the best don't let loyalty and sympathy make you just camp around people you know your brother is good but the truth is he cannot sing very well you want to be a musician collect his own tape so that you won't feel angry but go and look for people who have earned the right to command authority in that field loyalty has stopped a lot of people from moving forward A man of God who is not a businessman doesn't know anything about business is organizing a business expose and preaching all kinds of messages that don't make sense 
is a good man of God but a bad businessman. And a lot of people carry all of those principles and life flogs them back. Love your pastor. Honor your pastor. If he's not a businessman, look for a businessman and listen to him. Hallelujah. Finally, the third cost is the physical cost. If you're angry with me, that's a sign that God is working on you seriously. You know I won't stop. No way. Physical cost, the third one. It takes diligence and work. Not necessarily hard work, but work to bring forth extraordinary accomplishments. Look at me. Everybody say laziness. Say one more time. Laziness. For the last time, laziness is not my portion. In Jesus' name. If you want to accomplish things supernaturally, extraordinary accomplishments, three things must suffer momentarily in your life. Number one, your time. Number two, your energy. Number three, your resources. The proof of love, the clearest proof of love is the investment of time. You must have time for anything you love or you consider serious enough. How much time are you putting on ground? How much energy? Energy, everybody say energy. See, great people in life are workaholics are you hearing me they walk their life out until they enter that realm of greatness praise god i've been ministering in the last three weeks traveling ministering doing a lot of things but it does not stop me from doing the things i have to do hallelujah from this place i have another trip again traveling up and down yet you must give your energy everybody say energy some of you like sleep once it's 9 30 you're already nodding even if you are talking with somebody you just do like this and the next thing you are sleeping no no if you love sleep you will kill your, your future put your legs inside cold water and said my eyes you can sleep if you want to sleep but my life must move forward make that determination no devil in existence will stop you physical efforts there are some of us who are lazy you hate pain you hate anything discomforting you you hate embarrassment right now as i'm talking you're feeling embarrassed why are you embarrassing us see every great man in life is one who has been able to kill embarrassment where you open up your heart and say flog me just lash it let it come to build me many of us have lived in a place where everybody has lied to us either because you're a pretty lady or you're a handsome guy everything you do is right i tell you the truth if what you are doing is wrong i will tell you change proverbs 14 verse 23 we'll look at a few scriptures and we'll pray shiba katata your destiny must move forward in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 14 verse 23. Let's read together. One to read. In all what? In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips. Cheap talk. There are many people that talk, 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 talk. But the Bible says in all labor. Put your talk to work. In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the leaves tended to what? Penury. Back your talk with tremendous efforts. And tell yourself, no matter what it will cost me. Say in the name of Jesus. No matter what it will cost me. I am prepared to pay the price. To be the best in my field. In the area God has called me. I will be outstanding. I will pay the price. The price of time. 
the price of energy the price of my resources some of you are on scholarship students a few of you god is blessing you 50,000 or 75,000 or your 5 or 10,000 is coming every time you get it you are always running to the restaurant every time you get it boys it don't land you can't be great that way you can't be great that way so you create a momentary feeling of being successful why don't you pay the price and create the real one stop pretending like you are there when you are not there if your capacity has not reached for indomie take gary and use them I, I, are you following me now if your capacity has not reached for baked beans get the normal one shake off all those things from it and cook it giving thanks knowing that it will change there are too many people living fake lives fake lives you create an impression you do not have the resources to defend somebody comes you see my watch now you say i must buy this kind of watch you go and pack your whole finances and frustrate yourself and you are suffering alone and god will say so it when you buy it and that's frustration for you see let me tell you say after me there is time for everything say it be careful what you covet about people and don't put yourself under pressure you don't need to prove a point to anybody if you have only one trouser that has torn sew it honorably and wear it let the people laugh very well so that when you become great they won't they won't say it's magic they saw you some of you will charter a car from samaru to sabo you say i'm, I'm in a hurry hurry for what 250 naira that you can buy a book you have not gotten to that level be patient the jeep will come nobody is arguing it but it won't come now pay the price sister you will buy the human hair for now use what is available use what is available don't carry 10,000 and spend it and you are just moving around fake lives use that that resource to build yourself say amen. amen if your own has not reached for shagalinku go to zinc house go to come market go anywhere be honorable about it there was a time it was zinc house we used to go to that was that was our level and let me tell you in all sincerity even at that level we were better than a lot of people by that means it's just that we decided to push our lives down because we knew there was there were higher jobs. There are many of you. If you get one million today, today you will buy a car of seven hundred thousand, a phone of one hundred and fifty thousand, and a suit of hundred thousand. That's all. And you just come and then give a testimony. Say the heavens open, and I'm here. My car is there. My suit is here. From that day, you start suffering. Nothing else about your life. Stop pretending it. You will get there one day. For now, invest in yourself. waste your time you think people are looking at you let me tell you they are not looking at you they have enough problems in their lives to face don't deceive yourself they are not looking at you at all they have serious issues about their own lives proverbs 10 verse 4 we're rounding up proverbs 10 verse 4 he becometh poor that deals with what a slack a lazy a slothful hand he said but the hand of the diligent will do what the hand of the diligent will bless him and with that resource he will be able to do big things for the kingdom next scripture proverbs 12 verse 24 the hand of the diligent again God says scriptures about hands about hands the hand of the diligent shall bear rule in other words shall lead the hand of the diligent will take him above he will take charge he will dominate he will break records he will set the pace 
but the slothful hand shall be made to pay a price shall be under tribute one last scripture proverbs 20 verse 4 above all the sluggard will not plow and what is his excuse there is cold therefore shall he do what therefore shall he do what now is the time to sow many people let me tell you thank god you are hearing this now because there are people who think you are wasting your time i promise you they will pray in tongues and still beg in the days to come it's not a false prophecy it's the truth about life Many of the great people in this country are the classmates of some of our parents. True or false? Where were our parents when they were paying the price? And they get angry when they see them. This is what happens to poor people. When they don't pay the price and they see others that go ahead. See, every time you accomplish supernatural things, you create an effect that agitates people because of the frustration you respond to critics not by replying by producing more results are you ready to take your life from where it is to the next dimension I've shown you how these are keys your eatery can be the best God didn't lie when he spoke to you are you hearing me your business can be the best your ministry can be the best your life that book can be a bestseller you just need to find out find out from those whose books have been bestsellers you wrote your book it was great but it was not a bestseller yet find out God has told you that he's putting the word of the Lord in your mouth and you will be a prophet to the nations as it is nobody knows you go and get this spiritual capital of the anointing pay the price and i tell you if if i were a prophet if that god called me into the prophetic ministry i would have done things that would shock people many people are not ready to pay the price everything is available but there is a price tag on it if you can pay it carry it the best car in the world is still on sale if you have the money today you can go and order it nobody will stop you all the packages in life according to the measure of grace and your sacrifice and ability every time i stand before koinonia i don't see see let me tell you a time will come the people you see today will be the ushers in eni just the ushers because i know there is a world dying that cannot resist the solution we are bringing impossible our job is to contend for greater grace oh my god i'm a success hallelujah i have the capital of the anointing i have the holy spirit the wisdom of god in me and i will pay that price rise up on your feet i bring you words of comfort it will not always remain like this your life will change lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues supernatural accomplishments extraordinary accomplishments like Uzziah Make sure you are praying. You are shining like the brightness of the firmament. You may start from Zaria, but I see you going far. Don't say I cannot get here. Walk by the principles. They will open you up to those gates. The nation will stand and give you an ovation. The nations will reward your sacrifice. 
Inspire yourself. I cannot be a failure. And David encouraged himself. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we are going to pray three prayer points. First is your spiritual life. How many of you know the anointing is capital? I've shared it with you now. The anointing can make somebody come and sow a seed in your life. That your, your business for, for 10 years cannot give. I, why are you neglecting it? And one river came out of Eden. It parted itself into dimensions. You are going to pray. Say, Lord, I value your presence. I value your anointing. That anointing, I take it like a capital. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. The anointing. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. Power to heal the sick. Power to deliver the oppressed. Access in the spirit that will give me a seat among the great. I refuse to be an ordinary preacher. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Walking in signs and wonders that will confound men. I'm stepping into deep dimensions of power, of grace. I respect your anointing. I respect your anointing, oh God. Pray. You need the capital of the anointing. You need the capital of the Holy Ghost. The greatest gift. And the Bible says the gift of a man. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the anointing. They told Jesus, all men seek for thee. All men seek for thee. Rich men seek for thee. Blessed people seek for you. Because of what you carry. If you carry grace, they will look for you. If you carry power, they will look for you. If you carry unction, they will look for you. If you carry fire, they will look for you. They will invite you. They will sow into your life. They will bless you. My spiritual life, I receive your fire, oh God. It's not a waste, it's a glorious investment that will separate you regardless of your lineage, regardless of your barrier, regardless of any factor. There is a world dying out there. They need the anointing. They are willing to honor it. They are willing to invest in it. They are willing to reward it. When you become anointed, you will be above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. During my birthday, I was amazed at all the gifts that I got from people all around this nation and even from people outside of this nation. Many who have been blessed by the grace. Anointing is capital. Get this revelation. When you pay the price, if you get authentic grace, there are hardly any families that invite me today that may not package something. There are some of you right now. You came here. You left different places. You package seeds. Some gifts in kind. In cash. You are waiting for the grace to sow. Years ago, you were still alive. But you did not come to me. Because there was no grace. That means if I increase the grace. A time will come. I will start attracting a kind of people. Anointing is capital. Hear me. He said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, even thy God,
has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows I hardly pay for things in my life right now I hardly pay for anything because everybody is scrounging to pay something for me that's what the anointing can do in your life stop struggling go for the anointing go for grace go for fire go for power and see the way it will raise you all other factors notwithstanding there are people who would never listen to me but they have been compelled by the power of his presence upon my life my age notwithstanding it has opened doors for me my age notwithstanding my level of exposure notwithstanding do you know that the anointing is capital it can end inferiority in your life when you have something men will come to drink of it he said gentiles will come to my life prayer point number two you're going to say lord i've been intellectually lazy i don't buy books i don't read but i repent this night and i begin to build myself i study by books lift your voice and pray lord i go for books i go for tapes i sit down with relevant materials along the area that i'm trusting life to break forth for me koinonia pray koinonia pray he said then shall your life break forth then shall your life break forth the power of information if you know what to do greatness is yours for the taking if you know what to do and Uzziah invented engines pray my mind is blessed I am not God pray I study books I buy exercise books I study every day I sit under mentors I sit under men that carry the things I need whether in business whether in leadership there are men who have gone ahead already listen to them receive mentorship from them through books through tapes prophesy to yourself i'm an extraordinary leader i'm an extraordinary entrepreneur i'm an extraordinary business businessman i will shake this country with my ideas i will shake this country go ahead and prophesy i will do what has not been done before i will create a new ways in the financial world in the labor world in the IT world in the arts world hallelujah last prayer point last prayer point look at me last prayer point you're going to pray and ask the Lord you're going to say Lord give me such grace that I will not be afraid of pain and embarrassment these two things if you can conquer pain and you can conquer embarrassment I salute you because you must be a world champion pain embarrassment these two things if you are still conscious of pain whether in the cold whether in the rain you will invest time you will invest energy you will invest resources lift your voice and pray let pain oh god not be an issue for your people may they know no pain may they know no pain may they be men fearless men strong men of grace men of audacity men of audacity who will pop their eyes their hands in the eyes of the enemy men of faith fearless courageous strong prophesy say i can make it i can make it yes i can burn that idea great men are those who are 
survived much pain. Great men are those who have survived what ordinary men cannot survive. Great men are men who have endured. Great men are men who have cried and didn't stop. They fell, didn't stop. They were weak, didn't stop until they emerged as champions. Hallelujah. I speak a message of hope. Some of you are like Samson. Hear me. For whatever reason, your hair has been cut. Some, even your eyes have been plucked. And your family members are laughing at you to scorn. But I tell you something. When Samson stood near those pillars, his hair began to grow again. The Bible says, is there hope for a tree, although it be cut short? I bring you a word of hope. If the devil hit you and he did not hit you from the root, he only wasted his time. Because God will take that as a pruning and he will shoot you above and beyond. Hallelujah. So get books. Get tapes. Get serious. You know any of your friend that is not serious don't criticize them encourage them in love for many of you who satan is using your yesterday against you right now i silence the voice of that accuser of the brethren because the bible says that judgment has been declared upon him your mistakes of yesterday cannot follow you into your tomorrow there is a brand new day you can rise again. You can glow again. You are still that champion. Nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. The miracle is not in what you have lost. The miracle is in what you have left. If you have ears to hear and two legs to walk again, you will fall again. You will become a mighty dream. everybody remain standing all of this will happen only when your spiritual life is put in check and i know that there are many of us the lord brought you here tonight some of you have never truly made a decision for jesus you've had preachers again and again and again and again one of the secrets of our lives is that we are committed to turning many into righteousness daniel 12 verse 3 it says they that be wise shall be like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore it's an opportunity that you will become a star some of you have given your heart to the lord but honestly you have derailed from the part of the spirit and you have failed again and again and again and tonight you are hearing the word of the lord listen whether you are inside or outside there is love for you this is a place of hope are you hearing me the bible says there is hope for a tree you are that tree because the bible says you will be like a tree the lord is about to plant you tonight by rivers of living waters so that with any season you will still be fruitful i like you to leave your seat right now and come out here there are many people go ahead go ahead and take that step go ahead and take that step inside and outside don't wait for somebody else to come you are the first to come there are many people inside and outside appreciate them as they are coming Lord I need you in my life Lord I need keep coming don't let any devil stop you this is the beginning of a new season don't say everybody knows my face there's no time for that right now come and stand before his presence i can do nothing i can do nothing without you there's no light there's no light so i need you in my
my life. So I need you in my life. In my life today. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. The Lord is still ministering to me that there are two people who are supposed to be here. As I'm talking to you, the Holy Ghost is telling you, leave your seat and come out. What are you afraid of? There are two people. The Lord is showing me two people. Honestly speaking, the Lord is showing me two people. Two people, leave your seat and come. The Holy Ghost is ministering. There is one more person left. God cannot lie. Impossible. God cannot lie. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, those of you in front. Be proud of it. This is not a mortuary. Don't come as if, no. It's so, if I give you a gift, you will rejoice. When you want to give people speech and price, don't they come out? You call them out. This is the same thing. God is giving you a gift. Hallelujah. Mean it from your heart. Don't recite it as a poem. Recitation does not bring new birth. It's a sincere desire from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I have come to the end of myself and I love you with all my heart I know you are the only one who can help me and tonight I have heard your word take my destiny mold me make me a wonder I denounce sin and Satan I declare old habits are gone bad habits are gone I am a new creation in Christ according to the truth of God's word I have eternal life in my spirit I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me grant me grace to live a victorious life my generation will hear my voice from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father look at these ones they are your children your sons and daughters they have come in response to your call lord let their conversion be authentic may they never go back to the things that they are coming out from right now i impart upon you grace in the mighty name of jesus christ from today you will be extraordinary and you will do mighty things for the kingdom in the name of jesus christ hallelujah Praise the Lord. Please look up. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. We'd like to follow you, Pastor Jakes. We'd like to meet with you personally and to talk with you and pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to follow the usher. He will have your detail. The gentlemen waving their hands. Just turn back and follow them. They'll have your details. And when they have your details, they'll have a personal time with you. And they'll discuss further and bless you. God bless you. Please follow them. Appreciate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Very quickly, those who are worshiping with us for the first time, now please, I need you to understand this is not a ritual. We call people out to recognize them, to honor them, and to bless them. These three things to recognize them, to honor them, and to bless them. So, all the people who are coming, if this is your first time of worshiping with us in Koinonia, I'd like you to leave your seat. If you came with somebody and the person is not coming, tell the person, I want you to be blessed. You must be blessed. Push the person forward. God bless you. I appreciate all of them. Thank you for coming outside. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Thank you. May God bless all those who invited them. May God keep inviting your destiny helpers to your life in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who leave your homes, your offices, and watch a lot of people and don't invite them, grace for you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. I know you are we believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ENI You can download our messages on www.foreshared.com Eternity Network International Replicating the fullness of God's life on earth
dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekato. Katabranda Katapakotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.